when you don't get quality sleep, disease starts to build up in your body, your body can't detoxify, and you can't be at your best. And so sleep is critical, and it's so critical for every age group, all the way from infants up to through the elderly. And so you need to get good quality sleep. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Axe, and welcome to the Growth Lab Podcast. You know, each and every week, we're going to cover the science behind how to grow yourself, your health, your wealth, your career, your relationships, and so much more. And a little bit about me. I'm a graduate of John Hopkins University. I'm the founder of Ancient Nutrition, draxe.com and leaders.com. And I want to help you grow to your fullest potential. And one of the ways that in topics that's so important for you to grow and achieve your highest level in life is to get better sleep. And I think you're going to be shocked by some of the information I go through today of just how critical sleep is to your physical health, to your mental health, to your career, and just your general well-being. And a recent a uh, study just broke this past week, and it was for, at Gallup, and they discovered that 14% of adults in the U.S. report being too hot while sleeping and 6% report being too cold. And women are twice as likely as men to experience either condition, with women typically running about 20, uh, 20% of women typically feel too hot at night. And, of course, there are things that could... Uh, cause that to exacerbate that, such as going through menopause. We see tends to have women get hot flashes. But during today's episode, I'm going to go through some more breaking news, go through the studies, and then go through the solutions on how you can get your best night sleep possible. And sleep is something I've studied now for over 15 years. And I really believe we're going to go through the science behind some of the natural treatments. We'll talk about things like cold plunge, or cold showers. We'll go through blue block or sunglasses. We'll go through weighted blankets and a whole lot more today. Now, I also want to say this. So in that study I mentioned earlier around, uh, as we mentioned, there, there are a lot of people getting too hot at night, but about 57% of people in this study reported being too hot while they sleep on occasion. And so we found, again, there's a, there's a small number of people, maybe close to around that 15% mark that are too hot while they sleep about 6% if they don't. But more than half of U.S. adults on occasion while they're sleeping feel too hot and around 37% feel too cold on a regular basis. And I want to start off here with a quick story before we get into more of the science here. But I remember when my wife and I first got married. I used to sometimes get hot while I slept uh, when I was in my 20s, but not a whole lot. And then I got married. And I think, you know, when you ever get I, before you got married, I'm curious how many of you how, how many of you can relate to this. And if you're watching YouTube, feel free to comment on this. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, feel free to, hey, send me a message here or jump on the social media channels and let me know because we're going to be posting about this, some of these clips. But when my wife Chelsea and I first got married, I thought, hey, we're going to be cuddling in bed all night and spooning each other. And we realized after probably one or two nights of you know, sleeping close together, we can't take this. My wife and I both work out a lot. We got very hot when we slept. In fact, we would get so hot, we would crank the AC down to around 62, serious. And then sometimes at one point, my wife is like, we were so hot one night sleeping. She put a pillow in between us and said, we cannot cross this line because if you even get close to me, I am so hot while I sleep. And so I love to hear from you how many of you get too hot or how many of you get too cold while you sleep at night. Well, the science is showing that it, it greatly impacts your sleep quality, which then can impact your mental health how impactful you are at your career, of course, your energy levels the next day. It's been linked to depression, anxiety, and a number of health conditions. So it's really important you get your body temperature under control. And so you really want to think about how you can get better sleep at night. And, and we've all been in this situation, right, where you got a really poor night of sleep and you were cranky the next day. And there's another research study that found this. It said there is a big correlation between quality of sleep and your mental health. In fact, the study found those who rate their mental health as excellent or very good are six times more likely to get high quality sleep at night than those who get fair or poor sleep. 
And I know that I've been in this situation before, my wife and, Chel- uh, and my wife too, to where if we got a really bad night's sleep, it's easier to snap at one another. It's easy to just get frustrated or upset or have those mood swings. So we know that sleep also affects our relationships in a really, really big way. Uh, there was another study that found uh, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we saw the rates of depression and anxiety increase exponentially during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, one study found that those who got good nights of sleep, had, had quality sleep at night, had much lower, lower levels of depression and anxiety than those people who got poor sleep. So we even found when you're going through a life crisis, maybe you're going through something really, uh, really hard like a divorce, or maybe it's work-related stress, or there's stress with your kids or, or your health. Quality sleep is the number one remedy to help you heal and to help you overcome mental health issues. And so you really want to do everything you can. We're going to get into this uh, on this episode on what are the steps you need to take in order to get better sleep. Well, the first thing that you need to know if you want to get better sleep is what are the things I need to stop doing and what are the biggest sleep disruptors? Here's what they are. Uh, Number one, it could be a medical condition like a thyroid disorder, acid reflux, sleep apnea, of course, insomnia, snoring. These can all disturb your sleep. Uh, Getting into bigger root causes, though, a demanding busy schedule. This can include lots of time uh, both at work uh, or commuting back and forth, family obligations, life obligations. But really, when your schedule is stacked Every single day, you're doing some sort of task that's taking some sort of mental or emotional effort. That has been shown in studies to decrease your quality of sleep. Of course, from that can come high amounts of stress. So if you have a lot of stress, that decreases your sleep quality, effects of certain medications, alcohol consumption. Now, I'm going to get into this in a minute, the effects of alcohol on your sleep, but alcohol may have even more negative effects than you realize. The next one, of course, is overconsumption of caffeine, especially after two o'clock in the day, eating a poor diet, anything that causes blood sugar fluctuations, that will disrupt your sleep. Also, eating too close to bedtime. Did you know that there was an ancient uh, principle known in ancient Chinese medicine that you don't want to go to sleep within three hours of eating? And so if you're one of those people right before you go to bed or, or you like to snack before bed, that's really bad for your sleep. You might even fall asleep But it's not just about falling asleep. It's about getting deep REM sleep. So deep sleep and REM sleep. And and by the way, there's two types of sleep with that. And I have actually, I have this great device that I wear almost constantly. It's called an aura ring. And the ring actually tracks my sleep. And by the way, I'd love to hear how many of you have an aura ring. This is something that I've worn now for a couple years. And it will tell me how much sleep I had that helps restore my brain. So that's REM sleep. And how much sleep I have that restores my body. That's the very, very deep sleep. And those are the two types of sleep you should really be looking at along with your total amount of sleep. So you want to ideally get... Uh, close to eight hours of sleep at night with at least one hour of REM, if not more, and one hour of deep sleep. So so I've had people say to me, well, hey, I can drink coffee at night and fall asleep, or I can drink alcohol and that puts me to sleep. And it will and it might, but here's the issue, is that are you getting quality sleep? And all of the research indicates that you may be falling asleep, but you're not getting the deep and the REM sleep, which your body needs for recovery, for healing, recovery of your brain, and for your organ systems. Uh, Of course, we know pregnancy and experiencing hormonal changes can affect and disrupt your sleep. Uh, We know chronic illness, uh, so there's lo- there's lots of issues issues there. Here are some of the side effects of not getting quality sleep. One is you're more prone to disease. Uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, cancer, and overall mortality. In fact, did you know that if you get less than seven hours of sleep a night, it doubles uh, doubles your risk of getting a cold and flu, and it also greatly increases, as you mentioned, more than doubles your increase of getting cancer and heart disease if that's every single night for years. Um, it can cause trouble concentrating at work and school. Of course, it's very hard to learn, meet deadlines, and perform at work and in life, in your relationships if you're not getting quality sleep. Also, statistically, you're more prone to car accidents. You have less motivation to be social. 
So your relational connections are more poor and you have greater chances of loneliness if you're not getting quality sleep. Also, just a couple more here. Uh, You're more sedentary. You tend to work out less, have greater weight gain. Um, and you're more irritable, right? More mental health issues we mentioned, more prone to angriness, frustration, and worry. And then, of course, overeating. Uh, there's something that happens when you don't get a good night's sleep where it imbalances hormones in your body like ghrelin. So you're more likely to consume comfort foods and sugar. Uh, We also see that, uh, as I mentioned before, ghrelin is known as your hunger hormone. When you sleep, it throws ghrelin off, so you have more cravings. So you're going to eat a lot more of those unhealthy junk food, or at least half of those cravings, if you don't get a good night's sleep. And... And so, again, we can see here there are lots and lots of issues of not getting quality sleep. There's a research study released not that long ago shown uh, shown it's linked to memory loss, depression, and mood swings. So, of course, there's some issues there. And, and the science behind why this happens is, one, is it causes cortisol to stay high, which then in turn causes your inflammation levels to be higher. When inflammation levels are higher uh, and cortisol is, is, is high as well, it causes a chemical imbalance of a hormone called adenosine, which builds up in the brain during your wakeful hours. It's a byproduct of using energy, and it actually can cause hallucinations in abnormally high, high amounts. Have you ever been in a situation, think about it, have you ever been in a situation where you're almost delirious? You couldn't remember where your car keys were, like you just couldn't think straight. And some of you might be in that situation where you even think it's brain fog, but you just can't think clearly. Like the vision for your life and purpose and your ability to communicate very effectively and just think critically because your brain is scattered. These are all warning signs. You're not getting good sleep. But the, 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 the scientific reason is your body is pre, your brain has created too much adenosine and it's causing you to... Uh, It's causing you to hallucinate. Now, listen to this study. There's a study published in the International Journal of Occupational Medicine and Environmental Health, and it states that the impairment of performance, which is caused by 20 to 25 hours of sleeplessness, uh, is comparable to that after drinking alcohol intoxication to the level of 0.1% blood alcohol concentration. So here's what the study is saying. If you get in a, let, let's call it, you know, a, uh, you know a, a month's period of time or a week, if you're, if you're deficient 20 hours, I believe this is actually in a week. So let's say the normal is eight hours and we have seven days in a week. And let's say you're only sleeping about five hours a night, okay? If you're getting about five hours of sleep a night, your brain, you're walking around intoxicated, That's what the study shows. Isn't that unbelievable that if you don't get enough quality sleep over a long period of time, you're intoxicated. So it's really, really important that you're getting quality sleep. So listen to this, how alcohol, now I want to go beyond that. So we talked about not getting enough sleep makes you intoxicated like you were drinking alcohol, according to the study. Well, there's another study that shows that how alcohol affects your quality of sleep and Here's what the study found. Low amounts of alcohol consumption, so having fewer than two servings of alcohol for men and one serving for women, decreased sleep quality by 9.3%. Now, this is consuming alcohol you know, uh, w- once per week, actually. Uh, the next study found that those who are having alcohol about every other day um, decrease their sleep quality by 24%. For those who are drinking alcohol almost daily, even if it's just one drink every day, it decreased their quality of sleep by 40%. I mean, that's, that, that, that is a really, really big number. 40% lower quality of sleep over time will almost always lead to a major issues like cancer or heart disease or diabetes or a major, major health event. Because when that happens, your body can't regenerate. You should think about your sleep like this. Sleep is when your body heals. It's like plugging in the battery for your phone. And so when you're plugged in, you're, it gets recharged. If not, you can't recharge. So your body can't detoxify. It can't heal. It can't do what it needs to do in order to thrive. And so when you don't get quality sleep, 
disease starts to build up in your body, your body can't detoxify, and you can't be at your best. And so sleep is critical, and it's so critical for every age group, all the way from infants up to through the elderly. And so you need to get good quality sleep. Now, I want to start getting now into solutions for how you can get better sleep at night. And the first one is connected to what's known as your body's circadian rhythms. And this is your body's 24-hour clock. This helps regulate sort of a balance between wakefulness, when you're alert and you're energized and you're ready to take on the day, and when you start to... Uh, your body starts to get into a state of theta, a state of rest and deep, deeper sleep. And in humans and pretty much every, almost every other mammal, and of course there's some exceptions like, like, like bats maybe and a few others, but exposure to natural light is a very important regulator of tens of thousands of brain cells, which are important for your circadian rhythms. And the retina of your eye, and you may be already aware of this, did you know that your eye is, is connected directly to your brain? In fact, when you watch a fetus developing in a mother, you start to see there that literally the eye is connected to the brain. It is absolutely a fa fascinating. So remember that your eyes are connected directly to your brain. Well, when it's light out, your body knows that it needs to stay awake. It's, it's the biggest signal that you should be awake. And so when it's light out, your body is going to have higher levels of cortisol, which is correlated with wakefulness. Well, when it starts to get darker and darker and darker, the darker it is, the more melatonin your body starts to release, which allows your body to get in that deeper state of sleep. And typically, um, the peak of darkness is around 3 a.m., uh, in order to help with deep sleep during those times. Um, and then, of course, you know, as, as the sun comes up and down, that changes. But your body should be getting different types of sleep. And so it should be getting REM, it should be getting deep, and it should be getting just sort of your regular night's sleep as well there, which is still restful and rejuvenating. But you want to make sure that your body is in tune with what's going on. I read a study not too many years ago that found, and this is going to surprise some of you, but it, We've all heard that we should get about eight hours of sleep a night. This study found that we should probably be getting closer to nine or 10 hours for a lot of people. And really, our body should be living in most parts of the world, very in tune with what's going on with nature. And so if when the sun goes down, that's when you should be going to sleep. When it, when it rises, that's when you should be waking up. It's being in tune with nature. It's the way our body was wired to be. Many of us aren't doing that. So the more you can do that, the better. In fact, there are even clocks you can buy that start to uh, get brighter around a certain time when you want to wake up. And, and so those can be very, very good. But I want to mention how light affects our body. And so one of the best things you can do for getting a better night's sleep is to wake up when the sun starts coming up. And to the first thing you do is go and get outside for about 10 to 30 minutes. Go on a 10 to 30 minute walk. If you can do that when you first wake up in the morning, even if it's just 10 minutes, it starts to balance those hormones. So, so your body knows now, okay, cortisol needs to start coming up. Melatonin starts to need, starts, needs to start coming down. And this also tells your brain later on, it starts getting your body ready even for a better night's sleep the following, the following night. And so you want to do your best to get outside first thing in the morning is the most important time. Now, midday sun is important for vitamin D levels. Evening sun is good for your body to start understanding and prepping for sleep for those melatonin levels to start rising as well. But the most important of all three of those is your morning sunlight when it comes to sleep and your hormones. And I notice this personally. The more time I spend outside, the better I sleep, just period. Even to spend, depending on the time of day, uh, but just the more I spend outside. I, re I, re I remember in the, in the summer, I would spend, sometimes on the weekends, all day outside, especially with, with, with my daughter Erwin, we'd be outside a lot. And I noticed, wow, I slept so good those nights when I was playing with her outside. And on days where I'm, I'm filming or I'm in the office or I don't get outside much, I don't sleep as well. And you'll notice that with yourself. Listen, watch yourself on this. Spend more time being unplugged with less stress and spend as much time outdoors as possible and see how well you sleep. Have you ever gone on like a boating trip or a vacation? You just notice, I notice this a lot on boating trips. When I'm outside on the water all day getting lots of sun, 
I sleep the best I have ever slept when I'm in the ocean or, or, or water skiing in the water all day long. And you'll notice the same thing yourself. Now, I want to mention a few other things here that are critically important for good night's sleep. You want to make sure your room is extremely dark when you sleep. You should have blackout curtains or... Now, some people might disagree with me on this because you want to start seeing the sun come up in the morning. Um, but I do think while you're sleeping, you do want it fairly dark. Now, if you have a little bit of light coming in where it starts to peek in in certain areas in the morning, that's okay. But you also don't want it very bright while you're trying to sleep at night. And so you want to do your best there. And the other thing, big thing, and you're going to know this, you've heard about me talk about this before, but you also need to be very careful of blue light. This is why I wear blue blockers after dinner. So, so I don't wear them all day. Some people do that, and that's fine if you're getting exposure to a lot of lighter screens all day long. But for me, after dinner, I put them on. Now, my wife and I, listen, we, we still love our life. I'll watch a TV show, um, you know, and uh, and we have we have some great shows we're watching now. Uh, we, by the way, our favorite show we've probably ever watched is Sherlock. If you're a big, uh, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch fan like we are, uh, we, we're actually rewatching that right now. We're watching a show called The Chosen. Uh, we have some shows we just love. So, anyways, we still watch shows at night, TV shows. But I will wear my blue blockers when I watch the shows, and I've noticed in their study show you will get a better night's sleep if you do that, or at the very least, try and watch shows right after dinner, at least the hour before bed. Don't be on your phone or doing something like that, or if you do, try and wear blue blockers, or you can. there are actually settings on your phone where it turns the blue light off for you. That's a better option there as well, but do your very, very best to not have those issues uh, to, to not do a lot of blue light before you sleep. And what we started doing is uh, we started listening to a lot of books on audio uh, is something that I do before bed now. So I'll get in bed and do that and get in bed even earlier. And by the way, there are also some research that shows that the earlier, the earlier you get to bed, the better. In fact, there's, there's no science behind what I'm about to say, but there are a lot of people in ancient forms of medicine that believed every hour you get of sleep before midnight is worth more than the sleep you get after midnight. So getting to bed earlier is actually better than sleeping in later. And, and there might actually be studies uh, that show that as well. But just to say, try and get to bed earlier. Just like you have an alarm that may wake up at 6 a.m., you should have an alarm of when you go to bed, not just when you wake up. I, I mentioned this study earlier, uh, in, and I want to get into some of the, the things you can do now here in order to get a better night's sleep. And so the first is this. Uh, lower stress levels. If you're having trouble sleeping, you've got to lower stress. And so what I would do is write down on a piece of paper or on your computer, what are all of your sources of stress? What are the biggest things stressing you out? And figure out how to best deal with those stressors. Decide, am I going to give this over to God and I realize I have no control over it, so I'm just going to pray or meditate? That's an option. Or maybe it's something that you just realize, well, stressing or worrying is not going to add to my life, so I'm just going to do my best to do other things to take my mind off it. But whatever you can to lower stress, do that. You know, I typically find that it's not always the stress itself that's bad. It's the amount of stress or the time. It's every day throughout the day, you're so busy that it's some form of stress. And by the way, I used to think, that I that I um I didn't get stressed because I, I'm the sort of person that's wired. If my if our house burnt down and we lost everything, as long as my family is okay, my wife and daughter, I'm okay. Like like, like that's how I'm wired. I, I, I the material things we lost it all. We lost all our money. I've had this happen before. I'm okay. I'm not really that worried about it. However. I was so busy my first year, my first two years in clinical practice, I was working 60, 70 hours a week. I gave myself leaky gut syndrome, started having digestive problems, insomnia, couldn't sleep at night. I went and met this with this Asian medical doctor uh, who practiced acupuncture as well. And he said, Josh, listen, he said, you're just on all the time. You're constantly on. He said, you're stressed. I'm like, well, I'm not stressed. He said, your stress is different. It's not that you worry or have anxiety. It's that you just never turn your brain off. Well, I started spending more time outside, praying, reading, meditating, just going on walks, doing, doing things, not trying to get ahead and, and thrive at life. By the way, we all, many of us are like this. We have a sense of guilt if we're not doing something all the time. And that's wrong. You know, it, it's, it, it's putting your value on the amount of things you produce in life. 
That's, that shouldn't be what your value is tied to. Your value should be tied to the unique gifts and skills you have. It should be on contributing, but not at the point of, you know, you know, there's a, of course, a famous Bible verse. Don't try and, you know, gain the world, but lose your soul in the process. And that's the mindset you want to get out of. And this is critical even for your sleep, but also for your quality of life. Don't lose your soul or lose your sleep in order to try and gain the world, okay? By the way, there, there are studies that show that uh, you need to have daily rhythms to where you rest or you, can't, you, you won't perform at the highest level. You can't think correctly. If you tried to lift weights 10 hours a day, you would just break down your body where you need time to recover. It's the same with your mental health. It's the same thing with your family connection. It's the same with, with in, in every area of your life. There should be a rhythm of going hard and rest, of work and rest. You need to have a balance to live your best quality life possible. So I want to challenge you with that mindset right now of stress and sleep of look at your calendar and spend some time saying, I'm going to block out some time for me to rejuvenate so I can be better with my family, so I can be better in my career. Go through your calendar and block out times to do that. Listen, if you're a mom as well or a stay-at-home parent and maybe... And, and, and maybe you do, maybe your spouse isn't, or maybe you don't have a spouse around. And so you're a single parent and you're like, well, it's e easier said than done to just do your best to go get support, maybe at a church or a synagogue or another place of worship or a family or a community, but do whatever you can to get some time where you can think, maybe read a novel, go for a walk, do some self-care. It's critically important to your sleep, your stress and your quality of life. All right. Next thing that's so important for you to get better quality sleep, consider getting a weighted blanket. In one study of 32 adult volunteers, 63% reported lower anxiety after lying under a 30 pound weighted blanket for just five minutes and it also improved their mental health. Here's how weighted blankets work. Uh, your body feels like it's being hugged. And we know according to Maslow's hierarchy, one of the most important feelings we should have is a sense of security and safety. In fact, your organ systems, including your pancreas and your spleen and your digestive system, can't function properly if you're not mentally and emotionally feeling safe and secure and at rest and at home. And so weighted blankets have been shown clinically to help with this. And so my wife and I both sleep with a weighted blanket at night and your body feels like it's being hugged and, and protected psychologically. And so I would recommend getting a weighted blanket to sleep at night and it will do wonders for your sleep and also your mental health, depression, and anxiety. The next thing here is, remember we started off by talking about your sleep temperature. I told you, I remember my wife and I had, had times where, you know, we're kicking off the blankets and we're like, you know, I remember my wife one time was like, get away from me, you're too close. You know, we're giving off too much body heat. And so it's so important that you regulate your body temperature. And this is where a hot bath or a cold shower at home can come in handy. Or if you're more advanced, doing an infrared sauna session or a cold plunge can help it, it regulate your body temperature at an even greater degree. So if you're a person that runs hot at night, Take a cold shower. Listen, even if you take a normal temperature shower and right before you get out, you turn it down for one minute, that has been shown statistically to improve your quality of sleep. Or if you run cold at night, take a hot bath, put in some magnesium salts, that will help you sleep better. Or during the week, if you have a cold plunge or a sauna, you know, whichever, whichever temperature you struggle with, do the other, right? If you're cold, do a sauna. If you get hot, do a cold plunge and you will see it will help your sleep dramatically. Another thing that's important is your room is cold and dark. Typically, you want to sleep with your room between 62 and 68 degrees. That's thought to be ideal. In fact, the Sleep Foundation says between 60 and 67 degrees. That was scientifically shown to produce the best sleep at night. So 60 to 67. Here's another thing you want to have to better sleep, a bedtime routine. It should be habitual. Remember, your body's hormones are habitual. They, they get in a state of, of, of expectancy. So if you start going to bed at 10 p.m. every night, and then you try to go to bed at 8, it's hard for a couple weeks, but then your body eventually sinks up and it'll be ready to go bed at 8 and vice versa. So what I do at night is I'll spend time. It's like I eat dinner. I put on my blue blockers. We might watch one, one short show. And then I will go and I'll read. 
or I'll listen to a book on audio and then I will go to bed about 9 p.m. every single night and then I'll listen for another 30 minutes and 9.30, you know, earphones off, everything in bed and then I wake up about, you know, 6 a.m. every single morning. And so that's kind of my rhythm of what we have, but you wanna get your body in a rhythm like that. Here's another big one. Limit caffeine consumption after 2 p.m. and limit alcohol consumption. That will help you get a better sleep. Also, exercise 20 minutes a day has been shown to improve your sleep. And that's any exercise. That includes walking. Walking just 20 minutes a day improves your sleep, especially first thing in the morning and after dinner after lunch as well, around meals. It's very good to go for a walk. Here's another big one, diet. If you consume excess carbs, it will make your body hot at night every single time. And if you go to bed within three hours. So what you tend to want to do is eat dinner a little bit earlier and eat mostly meat and vegetables and some healthy fats. You don't want to do carbs at dinner. That's the worst time to have carbohydrates and especially mix carbs and fat because your body's about to just go and sleep. You're not going to burn as many calories when you're sleeping. This is what this might look like. A grass-fed burger with some, you know, sautéed vegetables and butter or coconut oil with a bunch of sea salt and maybe a half an avocado. And a little bit of dark chocolate is fine too. Something like that at dinner, uh, that's what your dinner should look like. Supplements, melatonin. Uh, I don't recommend melatonin unless you're having very difficult, a, a very difficult time sleeping. If you are though, melatonin has tremendous benefits. CBD oil, very, very calming. Hops is another one you can take as a supplement. It's a nerve tonic, especially if you get a little bit jittery at night or anxious or have had a, had a tough day. So, so CBD is very much with that. Um, theanine, L-theanine, that's an amino acid that can help your body sleep better. And then lavender essential oil, diffusing that. Also chamomile tea tea is another fantastic one uh, for you to do there as well. All of those will help you get a better night's sleep there, there, is, uh, there, there as well. And so remember what we've talked about today. So number one, think about your body. Everyone is unique. Do you run hot or cold at night? If you run hot, do a cold shower or cold plunge. Uh, or just even cold water on your face. Do something to cool your body down. If you, run, if you run cold, then take a warm bath or do infrared sauna regularly. Do whatever you can there. Uh, eat healthy. Eat less, do less caffeine, less alcohol. And be in tune with nature. Remember, the sun tells you when you should wake up, when you should go to bed. Keep your room dark and cold. Eat mostly meat, vegetables, and healthy fats before dinner. Get a little bit of exercise. If you do all these things, you're going to get much, much better sleep. Also, hey, I would love to hear from you. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to leave in the comments. I'd love to hear, hey, what is your best sleep story? Do you get hot with your sleep? If, you, if, you're, if you're married, do you and your sleep ever you know, change the temperatures where you're, where you're battling that? Luckily, my wife and I both like it really, really cold. But I know at one point before I got married, I lived with my sister a short time. She wanted to sleep with it at 75 and she would still sleep with a hooded sweatshirt on and I wanted it at so we would wake up all night and we would like, you know, and we would change the temperature back and forth. So we had thermostat wars. And so I'm interested if you've ever been part of that. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or any other, uh, any other uh, podcast audio plays, hey, feel free to jump on Instagram. Uh, we're going to talk about this on here. I'd love to hear how your quality of sleep is, your best sleep stories. And if you run hot or cold while you sleep. Hey, if you're not subscribed here, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. We've got so many incredible guests coming up as well. We've got Carrie Underwood, Dave Ramsey, Tim Tebow, uh, Mark Hyman, uh, Max Lugavere. We got some incredible people. So excited to uh, for you guys to be subscribed here to the podcast. And by the way, if you know somebody who needs to get better sleep, maybe it's your spouse, share this episode with them as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Growth Lab here with myself, Dr. Axe. Have a great week. Yeah.